In this presentation, we're going to look at using the sample function in R. Now, there are two types of sampling in statistics. There is sampling without replacement, which is the default setting with R, and there is sampling with replacement. Now, they're both more or less very similar ideas, but there's some key differences between the two. Now, I have a data set here, U, every value from 1 to 10. And what I'm going to do is specify that I want to sample five numbers from U. So, specify the data set and how many numbers I want in the function sample. So let's hit return. 1, 2, 6, 5 and 4. Well, 1 gets selected first, but after that it can't be selected again. So, there's a number to be selected from the remaining 9, and in this case it selects 2. After, the, after that, there's one, a number to be selected from the remaining 8, it selects 6, and so on. Just a little quick digression here. What would happen if you leave the number of elements empty, the, the, the argument for the number of elements? What would happen is that you get all 10 elements of the data set U in a random order. That's a, that can actually be very useful sometimes in a sort of simulation study or programming setting if you want to randomize an order. But that's a digression from what we're doing here today. Now, suppose I wanted to select 11 numbers from U. Now, obviously, this we cannot take a larger sample than the population. Okay, what's the rest of that argument? You can, there, when replace is false, so the we essentially we're asking for too many numbers. Suppose we needed to select twelve numbers from you, but replacement is possible, as in we can select the same number again. So how will we do that? Well, we use sample u 12 and we spe additionally specify the argument replace equals true so when previously we were using replacement without uh, sampling without replacement now we were specifying that sampling with replacement and what that means is that it allows numbers to get selected again and again here we have it uh, straight away 7 gets selected first but 7 get actually gets selected at the second time again and there's a few more repetitions there, 10 and 10, 1 and 1, and so on. Okay, so I have a second little data set here, and it actually only contains one element. Now, why would a data set contain one element? Well, and sometimes when you're doing a programming or a simulation study, you might reduce a, d a data set uh, from one step to the next, and it might end up that you only have one element left. So, what would happen if we asked for one run, uh, one value selected from this single uh, value, a uh, single element data set. So essentially, well, there's only one element that can be picked here, and we're only asking for one element. So what we should get is four. Oops, and we actually get it that time. So now a third time lucky. Sample v one. You notice that it actually selects the um, number 1, uh, but the value 1 is not actually an element of V. There's only one single value, which is an element of V, which is 4. So we should get 4 each time. I'll just, we'll do it one more time just to be convinced. Anyway, what's, gonna hap what's happening here? Well, how it reads this is as follows. It actually takes that value there, and if there's a single value, such as 4, it actually takes, understands that as any value from 1 to 4. So it actually reads this as follows. C, 1, 2, 3, 4. So any value from 1 to 4 rather than 4 itself. That's quite important. That can cause a few bugs if you're uh, uh, using sample in a very complex programming uh, task.